Yes, indeed. Sinashona, where would we be if Jesus is not with us? We thank you, Lord, and we worship you. Shall we just pray? Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because we are the rock of our salvation. We just want to thank you this morning that, Lord God, even in the midst of so many crises going on in this nation, and in the world as if everything is out of control. But Lord, we know that we're standing on the rock of Jesus. We thank you even this morning. Bless us as we enter the service. And we thank you for your word. We thank you for the worship we've had now. 
We thank you, Lord God, for this entire service. And I pray for the special anointing, Lord God, as I minister your word to your children right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. I'd like to greet all of you in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd like to particularly thank everyone who's online, who's joined us uh, at this service. We thank God for you. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge Pastor T and Pastor Anne and Pastor Joyce, the leadership and the pastorate of this church. And I thank God for you for walking this journey with me for many, many years. And I'd like to thank Pastor T in particularly uh, for the last three weeks where he was giving us very inspirational message, very anointed message, encouraging us during this lockdown period. And we pray that God have mercy on our nation. And let's pray even for tonight, for the president is going to have the huge responsibility of making decisions and informing us the way forward. I'd like to thank you also the audiovisual team that is putting together this uh, service online and I'm aware of the amount of work and amount of thinking and amount of planning that goes into this type of uh, uh, service and coordination and, uh, and, uh, and things, uh, connectivity and to make sure things work. So I really like to clap hands for you guys. Uh, I know sometimes uh, things do not work the way you had planned, but uh, uh, you're doing your best and God sees your best. Uh, and, and God is going to bless you. Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, when I was asked uh, to minister today, I said, Lord, what, what do you want me to speak about in such a difficult time, in such a painful time? Uh, how, what, do, what do you want to speak about? And, and it dawned in my mind and in my heart, in my soul, is that what is so important is our minds during this time. So I want to ask you a question today and say, the question is, what are you thinking about? And I want to repeat this question. What are you thinking about? It's very important that you really examine what is going on in your mind during this very difficult time, because it's so important. What is keeping your mind occupied? What is making you toss and turn at night and have a sleepless night? What is preoccupying you? What is always in the, every minute of the day that is really in your mind is very important that you know what is impacting your mind. Is what you're thinking right now and throughout the whole week impacting your mind in a positive way or is it impacting your mind in a negative way? What is your mental health state as during this time? We know that this time is really challenging our mental health. And it is important to know what you're thinking about, whether it impact your mental health positively or whether it impact your mental health negatively. So what you're thinking about determines so many things, whether what you're thinking about is leading into a dark alley or is, is leading you into light. It's so important. Because your mind at this moment is the, the battlefield. And therefore it is very important in, in, in understanding and you need to pause and think about what you're thinking about. We are living in an extremely difficult time. The pandemic is raging. And this pandemic has made so much damage and it has impacted us, all of us personally. Trust me, I know what it means, this pandemic. And uh, it has infected us. Many people have been infected. Many are sick. And right now, it's so important about what you think. And what you're thinking is so important. I'd like to emphasize this because it's critical. And you may be thinking about this unprecedented pandemic uh, that is raging in our country, COVID-19, Delta variant, busy with vaccination process right now. And then also we have a pandemic of GBV in our country. Oh, last week was the most devastating week of our nation, the most painful week in the history of our democracy. 
We saw looting, we saw rioting, we saw destruction of infrastructure. And, it's, and I'm sure everyone is thinking about what we, what's going on in our nation and the impact it has had on many people and many small businesses. I'm involved in assisting small businesses during this pandemic and the pain I'm seeing is unbelievable. So what are you thinking about during these unprecedented times? We are in uncharted waters. The situation that we have is uncertain. Therefore, in an uncertainty, the mind begins to wonder and it, is, it, it just gets into an overdrive. And once it gets into an overdrive uncontrollably, it can lead you into a very dark, dark, dark valleys. And therefore it is very important that you do not check, you check your mind whether it's leading you into a gloomy doomsday situation and thoughts that are, are doomy, a doomsday. And that is why I just want to spend a bit of time with you today and ask this question, what are you thinking about? But let me lead, lead, let's look at what the word of God is expecting you to think about during this time. Let's read the word of God, Philippians chapter four, verse eight. It's my favorite verse. I like to read it when, I'm, when my mind is playing around with me, when I'm going through crisis, when I'm going through difficult times. Let me tell you, I'm not preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself this morning. Because the last two months, my mind has been on an overdraft, asking too many why questions. And, and, and this is a message to me. And if you happen to be in the same space as me, please join me as we listen to this word of God. Paul here is speaking to the church of the Philippians and he starts with the word finally. Immediately you see the word of God starting with finally. You see a verse starting with finally. Know that there was something preceding that that was, that was important. Now this one is about to really emphasize it says finally you know i've told you that we've gone through such crises we're still going through this crisis and in maybe in your personal crisis in your personal life you 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 also going through crisis uh, you've got negative reports coming from uh, uh covid tests that have come through and they are telling you you're positive and right now i'm saying to you just listen finally believers what do you think about is important? And Paul says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is worthy of respect, whatever is right, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure, whatever is wholesome, whatever is lovely, whatever brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute. If there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, Think, and I hand them like, I'm going to repeat it three times. Think, think continually about these things. Center your mind and implant them on your heart. Shall we pray for this message? Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you that you're reminding us that even during these times, we need to think about things that are true, honorable, lovely, pure, wholesome, bring peace. And Lord, these things are so difficult, Lord God, to think about during this time. And we need your grace. We need your grace to help us reset our minds, to think about these things you're asking us to do so. Even now this morning, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now, I'm going to speak about each of these things one by one because I really want you to really center them in your mind, implant them in your heart. And I want to use this session this morning to go through them one by one. And I want you to really see them uh, one by one. 
So let's go through them, through this verse. It says, finally, believers, think about whatever is. And it starts by saying, let's think about what is true. Let's pause a bit about what is true. During this very difficult time, there's so much fake news going on. There's so much conspiracy theory going on. There's so much peddling of lies and rumors of lies and all sorts of confusion going on. Even on the issue of vaccine, I want to urge you in this church, we encourage people to go and vaccine. Because we believe that God used medical technology to help and heal us. This, so whatever is true. Please, I pray for the spirit of God that he helps you this time. That you will be able to have a discerning spirit to know what is true and know what is not true. So it's going on. And like we are in a war last week, there's so much now coming out. We don't know what is true and what is not true. But let me tell you, think about what is true. And what is true is in the word of God. Everything else, the center of our truth is the word of God. And it, Paul continues and says, think about what is honorable. What is honorable, very important. What is dignified. Mrs. Lucity, oh, you know, think about things as Nestunzi. Yeah. Whatever is honorable. What your character, think about how am I going to make my character honorable? That's what the word of God says we need to be thinking about during this time. Even during this difficult time, let your mind be preoccupied about things that are honorable. And the word continues to say, even those things that are worthy of respect, worthy of respect. It means you must respect yourself and you must respect others. Think about those things that are worthy of respect. Don't think about things that are not worth of respect. There's many of them that actually should not be respected. But do you need to think about those things that are worthy of respect? And the word of God continues to say, think about those things that are right. Now, right these days is relative. And uh, there's a whole theory of relativity. You know, what is right to you may be not right to me. And what is morally right to you, it may not be morally right to you. Think about what is right. That's what the word of God is saying. It says, think about what is right. And right is debatable these days. But let me tell you, the only absolute standard of what is right is the word of God. Trust me, I have read books. Uh, trust me, I have entered into a lot of debates about what is right and what is wrong. And we have entered into a lot of philosophical discussion about what right is. But listen to me, at the end of the day, you must have an absolute yardstick. You must have a standard on which to measure what is right or wrong. And I dare say to you, the only way you measure what is right or wrong is the word of God. The word of God is absolutely clear. And unless you've got that standard, you're going to be, your mind is not going to be, it, it's going to be restless. Because you need things that settles things. And the word of God settles you. And then continues the word of God. It says, think about what is pure. Very important to think about what is pure. I mean, what we are bombarded by media and social media is so unpure, most of it is unpure. It's pure, it's actually dirty, you know? And, uh, and you, you need to choose what you watch. You need to be very selective of what you watch. You need to protect your mind so that you release the space in your mind not to be occupied by impurities, but it must be occupied by pure things. Pure things that are are not mischievous, that have no motive that is evil. Uh, uh, because once you put impure things occupying your mind, they lead you to do things that are evil, things that are incorrect, things that lead you to sin. And whatever you think, you become what you think. 
So if you want to relieve a life of purity and a life of uh, purity of your marriage, sanctity of your marriage, sanctity of your life, it is so important to continuously think about those things. Because what do you think you become? And the word of God continues to say, and I'm itemizing them one by one because I want to imprint them in your mind. I want at the end of this, you have this on your screen uh, and you always look at it every day when you wake up in the morning, open your screen, put it on your screen, Savior, and list them as they are for yourself. Whatever is wholesome. You know, wholesome is, 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 is you know, God says to, to the woman that was with an issue of blood, the, the woman touches because he says, if I touch the hem of the garment, I will be healed. And Jesus says, listen, what uh, has happened to me? And the apostle says, no, but I mean, the crowd is all over you. And, uh, and, 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 and Jesus says, no, 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 somebody touched me. And the lady comes up and says, me, and uh, I've touched you. And Jesus Christ says, your faith has healed you. Go and become whole. You see, when you're wholesome, you're more than just healed from your sicknesses. Your whole life is wholesome. And, and, and everything around you becomes wholesome. And, it, and that is very important. So not only just your health, but your, 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 your children, your family, your, 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 your job, everything becomes wholesome. And that is why we see this also when you eat, you know, uh, this is eat wholesome food. Because there is uh, ingredients in a wholesome food that are good for your health. Wholesomeness is what we, we need in our lives, not just only healing, but wholesomeness. Because in wholesomeness, there's restoration of every part of your life. And this is what we need to think about. I'm emphasizing the word to think because the word of God urges us to think about these things. In another version, it says, meditate upon them, reflect upon them. In other words, it's important that your mind is preoccupied with this. And it continues, it says, whatever is lovely, whatever is lovely, think about lovely things. You know, Joyce and I have been around now for a long time. And sometimes we just see the two of us and think about lovely memories of our life. 35 years having married, we just look at the lovely moments of our life. We've had terrible moments in our life. We've had challenges in our life, but we choose to look at those lovely moments and celebrate those moments. If I were to advise, I always tell my kids, I say, celebrate those lovely moments so that you imprint them in your mind so that they are there when you are in trouble and when you are feeling as if God has abandoned you and you're feeling forsaken. And then those thoughts of lovely moments, the way God came through for you, where God uh, made sure that you either succeed, you pass your exams, you graduate, you marry, and you, you have all those lovely moments when you're traveling, when you're on holiday, and when you achieve things and when God, uh, blesses you those lovely moments lovely moments when your children were growing up lovely things that are lovely think about those things and i'm sure if you can just take a, a let me give you an exercise just uh, when we finish here take a take a book and put lovely on top and just itemize all the things that are lovely that god has do, done for you the blessings that gone for you uh, which we used to sing when you're young, a little count your blessing by name. Because when you do that, you shift your mind from a doom and gloom mindset into a, a mindset that is wholesome. And it continues to say, let's think about things that brings peace. Things that brings peace, whatever brings peace. Oh, we need it. Last week we've seen so much devastation. We've seen so much looting. We've seen so much criminal element. And I've been discussing with a number of people that the criminals are still planning. We need to rise up. 
to think about how we're gonna actively get involved in bringing peace in our country. Let all the people who are good and the forces of good come out and act. And so we need to think first about our activities that will bring peace, activities that will promote peace, activities that will enhance peace. And you need to think about it. Instead of thinking about last week and the devastation it has, think about what am I gonna do to rebuild? What am I gonna do? What would be my contribution? What am I gonna do to make sure that this doesn't happen again? There's a lot of poor people in our country. There's a lot of unemployed people in our country. What are you gonna do to bring peace? Think, think. Emphasizing deliberately and consciously the word think, because I want to, it enters your mind. I want to imprint it and what God wants you to imprint it in your heart. And it continues, it says, whatever is admirable. Wow. Who do you admire? The great people that you admire? What are the good things that they've done? We've got our icon, obviously, Nelson Mandela month this month, and I was watching all over the world, everybody talking about his forgiveness, his reconciliation, his ability to take away bitterness that was in his heart. And uh, after 27 years in jail, if it was me, I would have come out and said, I want to revenge, but he says, no, revenge is of God. And that is admirable, the whole world admires him. Think about things that are admirable and try to emulate them. Who is your role model? Who is doing good things that are admirable that you can say, I aspire? I wish I want to be like that. I wish to have a vision that is admirable. A vision that will bring a sense of peace and joy and happiness and admirable. And it continues, it says, please think about those things that are of good repute. Think about what are you going to do to make the gospel of Jesus Christ to be successful and admire? And think about those things that will make the gospel of Jesus Christ not reputable and refuse to do them. So think about those things, whatever is of good repute. We've seen so much things that destroys people's reputation. And there are things which have, somebody calls it a reputational risk, so avoid them. Think about your own reputation. How are you gonna make sure that your own reputation stays solid? Last week, Thursday, we had a, a session in ULP and we're talking with the chairmen of uh, big, global, big companies in our nation. And one of the most important message that came out of that is that in order for you to reach the top echelons of that, you need to make sure that your life, particularly when you're young, as you grow up as a leader, don't do things that are gonna bring disrepute in your life. So that when a moment comes, when you need to be selected to, for those roles, uh, people go into your social media, so the things that you've been posting so all those things that are bringing you into disrepute because you are careless when you are young. You posted things. Let me tell you what you post now is gonna stay for too long. Listen, we, we, we employ people regularly. And the most important thing that we do is reference checking. And we go through your social media posts. If you posted things there that are not of good repute, that bring your name into disrepute, they'll catch up with you. So think about how as you're going to start now as a young leader, if you're a young leader, my mission in life is to speak to many young leaders. What is it that you're doing now that will be of good repute in five, 10, 50, 20, 25 years, 30, right now, and do those things and think about that. I like the next one, I like the next one, because this is what I want to push, excellence. 
think about whatever is excellent. It's so critical, so critical that whatever you do, particularly us as children of God and this, the aim of this church, the vision of this church is to demonstrate God's unconditional love to all mankind and to disciple leaders that will make the name of Christ in the marketplace admirable and will make the impact in the marketplace. Let me tell you, the only way you make impact in the marketplace is to be excellent. It's not there to stand there and preach and, 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 and stand with your Bible in the marketplace and, 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 and bang it. Uh, they'll call you this Bible banging uh, uh, Christians, you know? Uh, Bible bashing, wavering and condemning people and telling them that they're gonna go to hell. That doesn't work in the marketplace. What work in the marketplace is you demonstrating excellence. That is why Daniel was able to have so much influence in the Babylonian kingdom, because he was excellent first and foremost. They could not find anything wrong with Daniel. All his enemies who thought that they will put a Zondo commission on him and investigate him and find corruption, they didn't. And then they looked at his work, they found it excellent. His performance appraisal was straight A. Five, on a scale of one to five, he was excellent. And then they give a testimony and then they say, look, if we check anything about his work, there's nothing we can find. Let's find something that will trip him based on his God. What a testimony, an excellent man, excellent woman. Think about what will make you excellent. Think about it, plan. Take a piece of paper and says, I want to be excellent for God in the marketplace. What do I need to do? Maybe do I need to study. Maybe I need to register some cause. Maybe I need to uh, get my emotional e, uh, uh, intelligence up. Uh, maybe I need to hone my craft and hone my skill. I don't know, but think about what is made you excellent. That is what the word of God is saying today. Finally, it says, whatever is worth of praise, worth of praise, worthy of praise. It says, worthy of praise. First of all, let me say, think about, as we finish here, who are you going to compliment? Be generous with compliments. I Tell you, if you're generous with compliment, you make people feel good, particularly if you're in a leader's position. On Monday morning, see what is worthy of praise. Occupy your mind with what is worthy of praise and just praise somebody. Because when you give somebody a, a compliment, you're giving them a gift. Start at home. If you're a husband or a wife, think about what you're gonna say to your spouse that is worthy of praise in the morning. Think about what you're gonna say that is worthy of praise to your children as they leave, whether they go to school or whether they're homeschooling or they're getting, just think about what you need to say that is worthy of praise. Look for it, look for it. Amongst your friends, amongst your colleagues, look for it and think about it and then say, God is gonna bless you. And I thank you uh, because I know that when you have uh, end of this, you need to continually, the, the verse basically says continually. You see, when it says continually, it, it helps you to, to, to reset your mind. You need to press a pause button now because you've been continually thinking about negative things. So press a pause button and say, stop. Now, I'm gonna from now onwards, continually think about the things we've mentioned about earlier on. So it's, it's an active, you need to catch yourself when you're getting yourself into a, a spiral of thoughts that are gonna lead you into a dark valley. You need to say, stop, press pause button, and then 
start continually think about things that are adorable, things that are bringing peace, things that are bringing uh, worthy of praise, things that are lovely, things that are, are encouraging you. And then it says, center your mind. In other words, the, 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 the locus of control of your mind must be these things. In other words, you need to take control of your mind. That's why Paul says in Romans, uh, renew your mind. And then from there, when you've renewed your mind, you need to now take the control of your mind and then center these things and then implant them in your heart. And then it will displace. And then you, press a, you, then you press a reset button. And then your mind is going to get into a different mindset. It will help you to fight the challenges you're facing. It will help you, particularly COVID-19. It's all about in the mind. The battle is won here. And because it is what we hear every day, death, the side. COVID this side, it, it plays on your mind and it wears you down. So reset your mind. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you. And I want to call you today that reset your mind. Press a pause, press pause button, reset, and think continually about the things that you've mentioned. And the God of heaven will help you. And I want to pray for those people who say, Pastor Morris, yeah, you've been speaking to me. As I said, you've been speaking to me. This is speaking to me. My mind is going on overdrive. And the mind is leading me into a very, I want to change my mind. I want to think about things. We're going to pray right very quickly. Well, look, we're going to also have a Holy Communion. If you're sick, we're going to take a Holy Communion and your body is going to be healed. In the name of Jesus, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you will be healed. And we are ready uh, to support you, to encourage you. And uh, we are here for you. Just make sure that uh, you, you send the, 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 the message uh, even to your connect group and to your WhatsApp group. And we will be there uh, to support you and encourage you and advise you. So let's just pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those who are impacted negatively, Lord God, in their mental health. And I pray that you reset, renew their minds. According to Philippians chapter four, verse eight, let them think, think all those things that are mentioned in that verse and let it be a blueprint of their mindset from now onwards in the name of Jesus, amen.